Hi everyone and welcome back. My name is Brittany and this is the second video on Monte Carlo methods of inference in our Monte Carlo methods video series. Last video we talked about how we can use Monte Carlo methods of inference for estimation. Now let's discuss how we can use Monte Carlo methods for hypothesis testing. So Monte Carlo methods can be useful for hypothesis testing in a variety of ways. In this video, we will utilize it to assess the coverage probability for confidence intervals and also to find the empirical type 1 error rate of a test procedure. Now let's consider how we can use Monte Carlo methods to estimate the confidence level. LU is a confidence interval for an estimate of an unknown parameter theta, where L and U depend on the distribution of the sampled population. L would be the lower bound and U would be the upper bound. The confidence level is the probability that the interval LU covers the true value of the parameter theta. Evaluating the confidence level therefore becomes an integration problem, and thus Monte Carlo methods can be utilized to help us estimate the confidence level. We can use this algorithm to estimate a confidence level using Monte Carlo methods. For each of our replicates, we'll generate the random samples x1 through xn. We'll compute the confidence interval L to U for each of the J samples. We'll check to see if theta is within that confidence interval, and we'll log that as y equals 1 if theta is within that confidence interval, and 0 if theta is not within that confidence interval. And finally, we'll compute the empirical confidence level by taking the mean of the sum of all the yj's. Let's jump into another example to help us illustrate how to use this algorithm. For this example, we'll be estimating the confidence level of sigma in a normal distribution with mean mu and the variance sigma squared. For this example, we'll be looking at a one-sided confidence interval. So that means that the lower bound is going to be zero and the upper bound is going to be um, designated as u. If the sample population is normal with variance sigma squared, then the probability that the confidence interval contains sigma squared should be 1 minus alpha. So let's use R to estimate the confidence level using Monte Carlo methods, um, and we'll estimate the confidence level of the confidence interval for sigma in our normal distribution, where mu is equal to 100 and sigma is equal to 13. We'll define the function UCL, um, and in that function, we'll set x um, as the normal distribution with mean equals mu and sd equals sigma, and we'll calculate the upper limit, um, which is the square root of n minus 1 times the variance of x over chi squared with um, degrees of freedom n minus 1. It's also important to note that here we're using alpha equals 0 0.05. You can set this alpha to be whatever you need it to be to solve the problem. In this simple step here, we're going to replicate that function 1,000 times. Next, what we'll do is we'll define the success as sigma being less than the upper limits we just replicated. If we sum those successes up, we'll see that the number of intervals that contain sigma is 948 out of the 1,000. If we take the mean of the successes, we can easily see that um, the mean is 0.948, and that is the estimate of the confidence level we were able to obtain from our Monte Carlo methods. We assumed that the confidence level would be close to 0.95, um, and 0.948 is pretty close to that, so it seems to be in line with our theory. Let's do a quick review of hypothesis testing. Let's say we want to test a parameter theta and see if it lies within a parameter space. For example, you can make the null hypothesis mu equals 10. And you can test that versus a hypothesis, an alternative hypothesis, mu does not equal 10, mu is greater than 10, mu is less than 10. When testing hypothesis, two types of errors can occur. Type 1 error is if we reject the null hypothesis, 
when in reality the null hypothesis is true, and a type 2 error occurs if we fail to reject the null hypothesis when in reality the null hypothesis is false. If we consider our example where mu equals 10 is the null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis is mu does not equal 10, a type 1 error would be that we reject that mu equals 10 when in reality mu does equal 10, and a type 2 error would occur if we choose to believe that mu does equal 10, when in reality, mu does not equal 10. The probability of a type 1 error is the probability that we reject the null hypothesis given that the null hypothesis is true. If we repeat this test procedure for a large number of times under the null hypothesis, we anticipate that the observed type 1 error rate should be approximately alpha. We can use the following algorithm to assess the type 1 error rate. We will create replications 1 through m that allow us to compute the test statistic t from the null distribution. We'll record the test decision i equals 1 if HO, the null hypothesis, is rejected at the significance level alpha and otherwise record i equal to 0. From there, we'll compute the proportion of significant tests 1 over m um, of the summation of i's, and this will be the proportion of the observed type 1 error rate. Let's once again consider the normal distribution and utilize that to learn how we can use Monte Carlo methods for assessing the type 1 error. Let's consider the hypothesis where the null hypothesis is mu equals 100 versus the alternative hypothesis mu does not equal 100 and we'll evaluate this at the um, alpha equals 0 0.05. We will be utilizing the test statistic labeled here as T star, which has a T distribution with degrees freedom 19. Let's jump into R to see how we can estimate the type one error rate. First, we'll define a function sim.p, and in this function, we will define the sample being normal, um, and return a test statistic for that sample. I'll do that right here. So that function's loaded in. Um, next, we're going to define a function mc type 1 error. And in this, we're going to define alpha equal to 0 0.05. You can define this to be something different if needed. Um, we're also going to have a replicate function within this function. Um, with p. So we're going to replicate a bunch of p's and find the p-value for when the null hypothesis is true. Our p-hat is going to be the mean of those p's that are greater than or equal to alpha, and then our se-hat is the standard error of that p-hat, and we're going to return a list of these um, where the estimate is equal to p-hat and the mcse is equal to se-hat. So now that that function's loaded in, we're going to run mc type 1 error with m equal to 2000, n equal to 20, mu not equal to 100, sigma equal to 13, alpha equal to 0 0.05, and our alternative, um, referring to the alternative hypothesis, is equal to two-sided. You could change this to greater if you want to see if mu is greater than 100, or you could do less than um, if you wanted to see if mu is less than 100. But in this case, we're saying mu is not equal to 100 as our null hypothesis, so we'll set the alternative to two-sided. All right, and you'll see that for us, we've got an estimate of 0.0475 and our MCSE is really small. If we run this a couple times, we'll see that our estimate tends to be around 0 0.05, and that's what we anticipated it being. Instead of me running this function manually, we can run this replicate function, and we'll replicate it 500 times to see um, if we can plot those MC estimates and see what our distribution is going to look like. So that ran for about um, three or four minutes, and then if we run this histogram function here, um, we get the following histogram. 
and this histogram is the distribution of the MC estimator for the type 1 error. We anticipate this being around roughly 0.05 on a good day, and it looks like on average that's kind of where we're at, and it looks pretty normally distributed as well, um, so all in line with our theory. Thank you for watching our two videos for how to use Monte Carlo methods for inference. Tune in to our next video where Michael will teach us a little bit more about Monte Carlo methods and how we can use them in a real world problem and how to use the R package.